gentle, very loving, very, very compassionate. So we pray each day, actually, we pray to Lord Vishnu, please protect me. Please protect me from within and also please protect me from without. 
which means please protect me from all worldly dangers that threaten my auspicious life. Also, since you are sitting in the very core of my heart, please destroy all my bad propensities, my lust, my envy, anger, illusion, duplicity, insincerity, desire for fame. Please just purify my heart and give me a strong desire to serve Krishna. So we pray to Krishna. We pray to Lord Nusingadev every day for these things. So this story, this famous story, this famous story of Nusinga and Pala actually is considered so important by our Vaishnavacharyas because it is especially relevant, relevant to every aspiring devotee's life. Now, Shiva Prabhupada himself would lecture, sometimes for weeks, teachings of Sri Prabhupada. And Lord Chaitanya, he would be in complete ecstasy, rehearing the pastimes of Lord Nishingadeva and Prabhupada recited by Karadha Pandit. Actually, they said that Every time that Gadadha would get to this section of the Bhagavatam, Lord, Nishinya, uh, Lord Chaitanya would say, read it again, read it again. You know, we know that Lord Chaitanya's special mission in Kali Yuga is to elevate even the lowest people to the highest platform of pure love and devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Therefore, he encouraged us to follow in the footsteps of Prahlad Maharaj, his innocent, sweet faith and devotion, his selfless service, his heartfelt prayers. Thus, we can attain the greatest treasure of the Lord's causeless mercy upon us. So on these particular holy days, the Lord gives us an opportunity to access his special mercy by absorbing the whole day in remembering him, praying to him, hearing about him, you know, chanting his holy name. We know ultimately the Lord is, he's actually beyond all limitations of time and space. If we, whenever we call out his name, he's, he's present there in the form of his holy name. We call out the name of Nisrina, he appears actually within our hearts. Whenever we chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Radha and Krishna also appear, along with your, all their incarnations, including Lord Nisrina. <laughs> So the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains, you know, why he descends to this earthly realm. He comes down to deliver the pious, annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish religious principles. So, you know, some people may ask him, what's a miscreant? So Prabhupada explains, a miscreant is someone who has this spirit of challenging the established order of the Supreme Lord. And we know that during this time in history, there were lived a very cruel, very cruel and powerful demon named Ranyakashipu. You know, after his brother, Hiranyaksha, was killed by Baraha, the Lord's poor incarnation. You know, Hiranyakashi Pu, you know, he was, Hiranyakashi was so dear to Hiranyakashi Pu that he was just enraged. And he became just fixed in his determination to kill Lord Vishnu, annihilate all the demigods, ultimately destroy the medical Vedic culture on earth. He wanted to conquer the universe, become absolute ruler of one and all. 
And we read in the Bhagavatam how he sent his demoniac followers there. They started burning all the hermitage of the devotees, destroying temples. You know, devotees had to go into hiding. And of course, to achieve this absolute goal, this absolute ruler of the universe, he and become invincible, he performed very, very difficult austerities for 100 celestial years, thousands and thousands of our years. And he, you know, he, he stood on his toes, arms up raised, looking towards the sky. And just, he just stood there for thousands of years. Very difficult austerity. And after some years, he couldn't even be seen. He couldn't even, he couldn't even see him because his entire body was covered by this huge anthill covered with grass. And the ants had actually eaten away all his skin, flesh, and blood. Just the ants got in there and just ate his whole body while he was alive. But by his mystic power, he kept his light air circulating around the bones. <laughs> and finally, Lord Brahma came, merciful, mercifully sprinkled some transcendental holy water on him, on the anthill. And suddenly, Aranyakashipu just emerged from that anthill in this, this new, powerful young man's body. He said he was like, had a golden complexion. He was like, very powerful, you know, very powerful, effulgent personality with this brand new body. And he immediately, you know, he fell down and offered prayers to Lord Brahma. He asked Lord Brahma, I want you to make me immortal. However, Lord Brahma told him, that's impossible. Even I'm not immortal. <laughs> so then, Aranyakashipu began pleading for similar benedictions. You know, they could not be killed by any living entity created by Lord Brahma. That he could not die in or outside any residence during the day or night, on the ground, in the sky. He also wanted sole lordship over all living entities and all mystic powers. So although these benedictions are very difficult to achieve, Lord Brahma agreed and watered all these boons. And soon, Aranyakashipu, with this great power, he took over, conquered the universe. He took over the residence of Lord Indra's opulent palace, he sat on Lord Indra's throne, where he just severely ruled everyone. He conquered actually the whole three planetary systems, the lower, middle, and upper planetary systems. So we know, as the story goes, Hiranyakashipu had four wonderful sons, and out of these four sons, Prahlad was said to be the best. He was just a reservoir of all transcendental spiritual qualities. So although he was born in the family of Asuras, demons, he was a great devotee of the Lord. Even from birth, he was just totally absorbed in the ecstasy of loving devotional service, always just fixing his mind on remembering Krishna in his transcendental pastimes. So, how did he become such a great devotee? And we hear that while this, his father, Ranakashipu, was performing these severe austerities, what happened to become immortal? Lord Indra, he took this, that opportunity and he attacked and defeated Ranakashipu's armies. And at that time, Lord Indra, he arrested Hiranyakashipu's pregnant wife. She was pregnant, and they were thinking, 
in her, in her womb, she is carrying the seed of a potential great demon that could be even more powerful and vicious than Hiranyakashipu himself. So they were thinking, we have to, we have to kill this child in the womb. However, what happened is, Narada Muni arrived on the scene. Because Narada Muni, he, he knew that within her womb is not a great demon. Actually, there's a great devotee in her womb. And Narada Muni took her, this pregnant wife of Hiranyakashi, to his hermitage. And he started instructing her with transcendental knowledge. And we know that when the child is in the womb, he can also hear. He's hearing. He can hear the chanting. And so little Prahlad, he was inside the womb of his mother and he was hearing all these transcendental knowledge given by Narada Muni. So sometimes, sometime after you know, Prahlad was born, then he started going to school. And then one day, the king of demons, Naranyakashibu, he took his beloved son on his lap, and he affectionately inquired from him, My dear Prahlad, what have you learned in school? Because you know the school that they send the little demon demoniac kids, kids to, as the sons of the demons, and not like our Guru, that they learn about how to become an atheistic demon. They learn about the politics of the demons, how to rule and divide your enemies and friends, how to even use religion to further your advancement in sense gratification. Because we see that even today, people are learning this, you know, they go to church, they go to the mosque, they go to the temple, not to serve the Lord or worship the Lord, they, they go there to pray. Because they think the Lord is their order supplier, the one who's going to fulfill all their material desires and free them from the reactions of their sinful activities. So we see this demoniac activity going on even today. They want to make deals with Krishna. <laughs> so he was asking Prahlad, what do you have you learned in school, Prahlad? Sri Prahlad fearlessly answered. He answered in a way that was completely surprising to his father. He didn't start explaining what he learned in school. But he started explaining what he had heard from his spiritual master, Narada Muni. And he began explaining the futility of material existence, the need for all living entities to take shelter of the Lord. Hadranyakashipu, when he heard this, he began to laugh very loudly and he cried. This boy's intelligence has been spoilt by the influence of the demons, the enemy. Teachers, take this boy away, protect him from these bad influences. You know, you read that in the report, he talks about even in the modern day, the demons. They try to impede the spreading of Krishna consciousness. They don't like it. In some countries, devotees have to go underground to practice Krishna consciousness. Other places, they stop the Hare Nam. Some places, they stop the preaching. They stop the book distribution. Even we see some devotees are put into prisons, tortured. Horrible things. I mean, these are modern day demons. But he compares them to this, like, Hiranyagashi boom. So, you know, Sri Prahlad, he was severely chastised by, chastised by his teachers because they were fearing for their lives. You know, Hiranyakashipu, we need to get on the wrong side of Hiranyakashipu, he's going to kill us. 
Then after some time had passed, when Prabhupada was about five years old, once again, Ranyakashipu took his beloved son on his lap and he asked, My dear Prabhupada, what's the best knowledge you've learnt in your school? Once again, Prabhupada fearlessly began speaking about the glories of devotional service as he started elaborating on the nine processes of devotional service. Now he wasn't telling his father what he'd learned in school, in the demoniac school. He, he was telling him what he'd learned from his spiritual master. You're right, me. So first, I mean, Aranyakashi, his lips, it is said, it, 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 it began to tremble in anger. He was so, he was furious. First he started chastising the teachers. Why have you taught Prahlad this? And they said, no, we haven't taught him anything. You know, we don't know where he got this knowledge. Then he began shouting at Prahlad. Said he, he was in, in a very fearful voice. It said he was, he was hissing like a trampled snake. He was so angry. And he started shouting at Prahlad. Where have you received this knowledge? Sri Prahlad, I mean, generally, most people, I mean, Aranyakashipu was feared by everyone in the three worlds. It is said that even Brahma and Vishnu would come and make offerings <laughs> to Aranyakashipu just to keep him trying to pacify him. You know, he was so feared. But Pallad was completely fearless. He continued preaching to his angry father about the pitfalls of demoniac life, the glories of living the spiritual and godly life. This was just completely intolerable for Renekashipu. He became blind, he said he became blinded by anger. He just picked up his little son and he just threw him on the ground and he instructed his demoniac servants, kill him, kill him as soon as possible. That's terrible. This is terrible. Thus the demoniac Rakshasa servants, they began to try and kill the light in many horrible ways. First they tried, you know, piercing him with sharp tridents. And failing to do this, you know, they tried so many other things, you know, throwing beneath the feet of elephants, throwing him in pits of poisonous snakes, hurling him from the tops of mountains, administering poison to him, rolling big rocks on top of him. They tried starving him casting horrible spells on him, exposing him to severe heat and cold. I mean, things that normally people would just die immediately. But Pilar, he didn't care. He was fearless. He was just chanting the holy name and just praying to the Lord for his protection and shelter. And the Lord reciprocated with his spirit of earth and fully protected him. As much as the demons tried, they could not harm him in any way. So we see, you know, also we see Lord Chaitanya, as I said, he advises to try and follow in the footsteps of Sri Pallad Maharaj. And this would be very pleasing to Lord Nishimadev to follow in his footsteps. It means that even when we're faced in life with the greatest opposition or difficulty in our life, we must welcome that difficulty and immediately take shelter of Krishna by becoming absorbed in the process of devotional service. 
chanting the holy name of the Lord, praying to the Lord, remembering the Lord, associating with his devotees, hearing and chant, reading topics about Krishna, and just becoming conscious of the need for Krishna's mercy and protection, which is beyond ourselves. You know, all the obstacles that come into our life from within and without, it may be, it can be any number of wonderful, many things. It can be the people around us. It may be enemies or even relatives sometimes. It may be our own desires or martyrs that are in our hearts. It may be even our health. Or it may be severe climatic conditions like cold and heat. It may be in one of many circumstances. As, but as Lord Chaitanya recommended, we should become fearless like Prahlad. Have full faith in Krishna like Prahlad. And have absolute obedience to our Guru like Sri Prahlad. We have to welcome difficulties that come into our life with a happy heart like Prahlad and just immediately take shelter of the Lord in the process of devotional service. And the Supreme Lord will appear in this world in our hearts like Prahlad to protect us, to uplift us. You know, generally when the need is there, when it's visible, people do take shelter, don't they? When they're in difficulties and troubles, but they don't take shelter of God. They take shelter of their own minds, their own intelligence. They take shelter of, some people just take shelter of intoxication or gross sense gratification. Or, or even the fallible soldiers of people that can't even help them. You know, psychologists, psychiatrists. <laughs> Social workers. You know, when Hiranyakashipu realized that his son, Pallad, could not be killed due to his connection to Lord Vishnu, it is said that for a moment, even though he was so powerful and so fearless, for a moment, he became fearful. <laughs> You know, deep down he realized that you know there's someone more powerful than me out there <laughs> that may come and try and get me. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, Pallad's teachers, they convinced her in case he should re they can reform Pallad. We can change his intelligence. So Sri Pallad was sent back to school. But then what did he do when he went back to school? He began instructing his classmates, the sons of the demons, about the glories of devotional service to the Lord and the ultimate purpose of the human form of life. And suddenly all these little sons of the demons in the demon school, they, they all became devotees. <laughs> However, when Hiranyakashipu found out that all these sons of the demons were becoming devotees of the Lord due to Prahlad's influence. His whole body just started trembling in anger. Once again, he was hissing, hissing like a trampled snake. <laughs> was, this is like the epitome of anger. <laughs> and he began angrily shouting at Pallad, Oh, most impudent, most unintelligent disruptor of the family. Oh, lowest of mankind. You have violated my power to rule you. Therefore, you are an obstinate fool. Today, I shall kill you. By whose power has a rascal like you become so impudent that you appear fearless 
and overstep my power to rule you. Once again, Sir Prahlad fearlessly began telling his angry father. I mean, when someone's really angry like that, you just you just try and walk away. You, you don't try and get into but Prahlad. <laughs> totally fearless. He told his father, you should give up your demoniac life. Simply surrender to the Lord. You know, this actually made Aranyakashi be, who became more and more angry. He became totally enraged. He began fearlessly shouting at the love. Oh, most unfortunate Pallad, you tell me there is a being. You tell me there's a being other than me who is the supreme controller? Let me see your worshipful Lord come to protect you as I cut off your head. Then that enraged, hideous demon, he just totally overcome by this intense anger. He just struck the pillar of the palace with his powerful fist. And then suddenly, what happened? <laughs> Within the pillar came this fearful sound. As he has said this, it was like a sound which, which, which cracked the universe. It was just so like. And then Aranyakashipu looked up, and what did he see? He saw this huge form of Lord Nashunadev appear from the pillar with angry red eyes, deadly teeth, razor sharp tongue, many arms carrying various weapons. So just for a moment, he studied this form of the Lord. He was thinking, what is this? Then he started thinking momentarily, this is part of Vishnu's plan to try and kill me. Immediately in a fit of rage, he attacked the Lord with his mighty club. Lord Nishingadev, he, he captured him. He captured him with his arms. But then, he let him slip from his hand. You know, sometimes we see that with, with cats. You know, they catch their prey and then they let him go and then they catch him again. <laughs> he let him slip from his arms momentarily. Granny Kashifu was thinking, ha! He's afraid of me. He's afraid of me. And he took up his, this time his, his, his sword and shield. And he raced in there in the spirit of rage to attack the Lord with great force. It is said that suddenly in a shingade, he made this loud shriek of laughter. <laughs> and then with the speed of a hawk, he captured the Ranyakashipu, placed him on his lap, then tore him to pieces with his sharp razor nails while roaring very, very loudly. <laughs> and then, you know, it, it, I think it is said that lions do this sometimes. He ripped out his intestines and he guarded himself with the intestines. He was roaring very, very loudly. And then he looked up, and what did he see? There was hundreds and thousands of Aranyakashipu's faithful demoniac soldiers coming to attack him. A huge army of soldiers were coming to attack Nishingadev. So 
we're in the Srimad Activity, he didn't run away. But he first, it is said, he uprooted Hiranyakashipu's uh, heart. <laughs> Just like ripped out his heart. Then he chucked him on the ground. He got up his up his seat. And he just plunged himself into that massive demoniac army. And then with his claws, it was just like killing them. It's actually, there's a very nice picture in the back of the time, it depicts this. And you see the, you know, there's pictures there of big claw marks and people's, and the soldiers' heads on their backs. He <laughs> just, Hundreds and thousands of soldiers, and Srinidhi was just like killing them with these claws. Terrible scene, pretty ghastly scene, and a lot of blood. <laughs> the razor sharp claws. Meanwhile, the demigods are very happy. They're showering the flowers from the heavens, offering many beautiful prayers. And the singer day, you know, he was like, he was pretty fired up. He was like, uh, extremely angry mood at this time. And it was like, you know, no one dared have come near him or approach him. Then Lord Brahma, Brahma he requested Sri Prahlad, please. You go forward and, and appease this angry Lord. So Sri Pallad humbly came forward. He fell down at the Lord's feet and offered some of his obeisances. And you know, when Lord Nishrita, even now he was so angry and so fearless, and when, he, when he saw his dear devotee before him, he became so ecstatic in affection for Sri Prahlad. And, and he placed his, his hand on Prahlad's head. And it is said that immediately when he did that, all the symptoms of transcendental loving ecstasy be manifest in Sri Prahlad's body. His heart was just filled with love, his eyes, we just filled with tears. And he, he began offering these beautiful heartfelt prayers to Lord Nishinadev. Lord Nishinadev, he was very pleased with his dear devotee, Prahlad. And actually he gave the order that Sri Prahlad should rule his father's kingdom for many, many years and enjoy royal opulences. Then he could return back to the local Vindal in the spiritual world. So in this wonderful pastime we see the Lord in the form of Lord Nishinga is very personally dealing with his pure devotee. And he will also personally deal with us. You know, his only desire of Lord Nishinga Day is that we all go back home, back to Godhead, back to the spiritual world. His, it is said that Lord Nishingadev's whole focus is just his incredible, deep compassion for his dear devotees. And therefore he's always trying to help us, even though we don't might not realize it. Nishingadev's in the background and he's always trying to help us in our, in our Krishna consciousness. And it is said that he will actually provide us with a very personal path according to our needs, a, a special path especially designed for us according to our nature and our particular situation so we can get purified, so we can get the purification we need to become Krishna conscious and go back to God. He has no other desire to bring us to that state of pure love of God. So in this way, we have to place our trust in Him always. 
Although at times, you know, sometimes we see that Krishna may make it a little difficult for us. Little obstacles and tests and obstructions and impediments on our spiritual journey. But this is just his mercy. It's his mercy to purify us, to encourage us to take shelter of him and the process of devotional service, to go deeper into the bhakti yoga. And it's said that he'll never actually test us beyond our capacity to manage. We must simply trust the Lord at all times. You know, he's truly our best friend, our well-wisher, and he'll always protect us from within and without. So we should be very eager for that protection, for that spiritual upliftment, and we should be very eager to remove all the unwanted desires and attachments that prevent us from attaining pure love for God and Krishna. But we have to always remember that he will only remove them to the extent that we're willing to take shelter from him. Which means that we cannot be successful in our spiritual life without his mercy. But still, we have to show our sincerity by very strictly following this process that Prabhupada has given us, trying to surrender our time, our energy, our resources in his service, trying to um, go out and spread the mission of the spiritual master. We have to show our sincerity by making a, a, some kind of effort in our spiritual practices. And then he will, he will remove all these unwanted desires and attachments and, and he will help us more and more to become Krishna conscious. So although, although Nusringade may appear in some ways to be very harsh, with these razor sharp nails and teeth like thunderbolts, his angry mood towards the demoniac. Even sometimes I see in my in my book they've got that very he is in the Ugra Nasringa deity there, the pink Nasringa deity in Mayapo is like pretty powerful. And sometimes I see, sometimes the Indian people, I guess they come in with the little kids, and when they see Nasringa day, they start crying. <laughs> it looks so ferocious. <laughs> but there's no need to fear Lord Nasringa day. It is said that the hardness on the outside shows it depth of how deeply he cares for his devotees and wants to protect them. He is truly our best friend and well-wisher and our dear most protector. Therefore we should have full faith in him always. Oh, oh, would anyone like to add anything? Or... Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I just yeah, wanted to ask uh, what's the story of uh, uh, Mother of Sri is huh? uh, The mother of Sri Prahlad, is she became also a devotee after meeting Narada Muni? I don't know, it's not mentioned in the book. Oh, it, 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 Mother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, I've not, I haven't read anything in the book at the time about it, but um, I'd, I'd say, you know, you know. Okay. 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 With some bhajans and a glass of full of rock, and then we have the Abbey Shake and the kid, the Aarti, and the big feast cooked by Rupa, Rupa Goswami, and Guru Prabhu.